Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and when life gives you lemons, you make a quilt. Or let's just say a quilted tablecloth. The fabric is from Northcott, and it's called When Life Gives You Lemons. And this quilt is going to be made with very simple pieces. There's four main squares with sashing and borders. So to start with, we're going to need four nine inch squares. So this is a great time to use a fabric that has a nice big print in it. We're gonna put triangles around that big piece and we're gonna start with those triangles at a seven inch square. And we need to take that square and cut it in half. And you will need to start with eight of these squares. The squares are gonna be sewn on all four sides. We will need to find the center marks to these four squares. Folding them in half and just putting a little crease with your hand will work fine. And do the same thing for the triangles. The edge that we've cut in half is the edge that's going to be stitched on. Match up those two center marks and stitch a quarter inch. When the two triangles are put on, you're going to be able to trim off the dog ears on the end of that fabric. And by doing this now, you won't need to measure it. We're just going to be able to use the edge of the square and trim off that point trim off all four dog ears. From here, press those triangles out to the dark side. From here, we're going to be able to add on the two other triangles. Same method, finding the two centers, match them up and stitch that quarter inch. And to trim off these dog ears, we can do the same thing. We just need to follow that last edge of fabric and snip off that dog ear and press towards the outside. The block needs to be trimmed down to 12 and a half inches. You might have just a tiny little bit that you need to trim. It will all depend on how wide that quarter inch was. We need to maintain a quarter inch from that point over on all four of those points. If you have a 12 and a half inch ruler, this is a great time to use it. I only have just a very little bit all the way around to trim off. If you do like to trim them down, you can start with these black squares a little bit bigger than seven inches. You could do about seven and a quarter, cut them in half and stitch them on. You will have more space to trim down if you'd like. I used a scant quarter inch, so I'm going to have just a very little bit all the way around to trim. And I will still be able to maintain that quarter inch. We now have four of these nice big 12 and a half inch blocks. This is the main body of the quilt. We just need to add some sashing. We will need 12 strips of fabric, three and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. And those strips are gonna fit in between the blocks and we'll also go around the outside of each block. If you have a fabric that's directional, this would be the time to make sure the blocks are in the right place. From here, we need some squares to fill in those holes. The squares will need to be three and a half inches. If you have a fabric that you can fussy cut, this is a fun time to use it. Now I can fill in my spots. You will need nine of these three and a half inch squares for those corner units. And if you're cutting, you can cut four more and they're going to go on the very outside on a border. So a total of 13 three and a half inch squares are going to be needed. Once I have a layout that I like, I can sew all of these units together. You can sew them in rows or sew them in corners. If you sew them in corners, you're going to do the four corners and then this cross beam is going to be put on after. As I sew the sashing onto the blocks, I make sure that the big block seams are coming out. That's going to help those points look a lot pointier when it's done. I also will stitch them from the side where I can see that point and that way I make sure that I get right to that little point and that keeps my points nice and sharp at the front. It is definitely a lot easier getting to that point when you're looking at that side of the fabric. And when the fabric is pressed away from that point, it's going to help keep that point sharp. If the fabric is being pressed in the other direction, because there's a shadow here and the fabric is heavier at the point, it looks like the point has been cut off. So having that fabric pressed away from that point will definitely keep it a lot sharper. The body of the quilt is done. Nice big piecing, very easy to go together. And I do want to add a few more borders. The two more borders that I want to add, the fabric really wants to compete with the body of the quilt. 
and I want them to be a focal point. I want them to really stand out. So in order for them not to compete and stand on their own, I'm going to add little borders in between. Now these are cut at one inch, so they will only end up being a little half inch. But having that little half inch between the borders in just a plain black lets this fabric stand on its own. So each of the fabrics take their own center stage. The binding I'm going to use is this fabric in the inside. So it reads almost as a solid black. So it's not going to compete. So the first thing I need to do is add on this little one inch border all the way around. The quilt should measure 33 and a half inches. So the first border on top and bottom should be cut one inch at 33 and a half inches. On the sides, we also need it cut at one inch but it will equal 34 and a half inches. Little thin borders have a tendency to want to stretch when you iron them. So this is one time I would not recommend ironing this seam. Finger press it so that the seam is coming to the outside. And that hand pressing is going to help keep this nice and straight and not stretch this little border. The next border is going to be cut at two and a half inches wide. So we will need 34 and a half inches for two sides and 38 and a half inches for the two opposite sides. Once that two and a half inch border has been put on, we can then press this first border. We want to press that seam going towards the black. So both of those seams are coming towards this little border. By pressing the seams towards the center of that little black border, we have the same amount of fabric underneath. And it's going to be higher than the two borders beside it. This border will now appear a little bit higher than the two beside and it gives it a really nice polished look. We need to add one more one inch border all the way around the outside, repeating the same technique as we did this border. That little strip will be cut at one inch, two sides will equal 39 and a half inches and the two other sides will be 38 and a half inches. There's one last border to put on. The border is cut at three and a half inches and all four sides are going to be the same size at 39 and a half inches. The reason is we're going to put a cornerstone. So we will have four cornerstones that will match the cornerstones in the middle of the quilt. So we'll need to sew the border on two sides and for the top and the bottom, we're going to add those cornerstones on each side. Now when we go to match them together, they're all going to fit. The quilt top is now done. When it is quilted, I'm going to pair it up with this very dark border, which is the same in this block right here, which means there's a high contrast between every single color. All of the colors now can stand on their own, but they really do complement each other. This quilted tablecloth is quick and easy to make. Those big center squares really give you a chance to use fabric that's nice and big that you don't normally want to cut into smaller pieces. If you want to make it rectangular, all you need to do is add two more squares along the bottom. This is going to be a lot of fun to decorate with. I can picture a nice big bowl of lemons and some daisies. What a fun, fun tablecloth to have outside on the picnic table. I do hope you give it a try and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.